Have you inherited a house without a mortgage? Well, you may have some questions about what the next steps are. I'm gonna talk about some of those here, so stick around. Hi, I'm Annie Baker. I'm a realtor here in Silicon Valley. I specialize in selling houses, and oftentimes that means I'm selling properties people have inherited. But I'm not here to talk to you about selling. I'm here to talk about things that you need to consider before you make a decision, whether you should hold it or sell it. Every situation is different. I'm assuming your property is in California and here we are the end of 2020, beginning of 2021. And a new proposition, Proposition 19 just passed, which will affect you in your situation of inheriting a property. Unless you make that inherited property your primary residence, if you hang on to it, the property taxes will be reassessed at the current market value. And that can be a significant difference compared to what the previous owner was paying, especially if they've owned that house 10, 20, 30 years. Uh, the, the market value will really affect the monthly cost to holding on to that property. So number one, understand if it's gonna be your primary residence or if you're gonna keep it as a rental, what the property tax impact will be for you. And if it's your primary residence, one of the biggest things I encourage people to do is to evaluate the property in its current condition. I highly recommend getting you know, like a termite inspector, a bare minimum, maybe even a home inspector. Both combined, it's maybe a $700 cost to you, but you will know exactly what's going on in that house, what kind of deferred maintenance, if there are any active termites, uh, what the shelf life of appliances that are currently in place are, it's worth the $700 investment. And not all inspectors are created equally, so please reach out to me for my recommendations. They're fabulous. But that's the first thing. Don't just think, oh, I'll just you know move in. Get an evaluation of what's going on in the house. And then if there are some either upgrades or just some deferred maintenance things, along with my recommendations for inspectors, I have fantastic vendors for you know anything from handymen to floor guys to painters. My list is fantastic, so don't hesitate to reach out for those. On the flip side, if you decide to keep it as a rental, again, I encourage you to still get the inspections done just to get a baseline of what, what property you're actually taking on as a rental. And don't just think, oh, the market's so hot in Silicon Valley. We don't really have to fix it up. We can just get a tenant as is, even though it's super dated and kind of not in great shape. You might attract tenants that will come and see the property really wasn't updated or hasn't been that well maintained, and they're gonna treat it like that. So they might not take very good care of that rental property, even though since there's no mortgage, even with the increase in property taxes, you still might be enjoying some passive income but they might be damaging the house even more and just causing you headaches you don't need. So I highly recommend if the property was not in great shape, I'm not saying, you know, make it a 10 and update everything, but you know, use me, have me come take a look at it and tell you what would be important as a rental. I don't do rentals, but I do know what people are looking for. And I want you to get a good quality tenant uh, in a house that, it looks like it's been maintained and taken care of. I also have some fantastic property managers if you need help with that. Another thing to consider if you are keeping it as a rental and if this house is already paid off, maybe you could even expand your real estate investment portfolio by pulling some of the equity out of the house. Let's say round numbers, the house is a million dollar home. If you refinance it and pull 200,000 out, the mortgage will be really low for you, but then you can take that 200,000 and go buy another property. I don't care if it's in California or somewhere else. Think of the term, the velocity of money, using that money to increase your wealth. It's a fantastic option. And then probably your last option is, it just makes sense for you to sell it. Just sell it and move on. Whether you take the money and invest in other real estate somewhere else, buy your own primary residence, somewhere else, pay off your primary residence. I don't know, but a lot of things to consider before you put that on the market. I have lots of videos about that, but for now I'm just keeping it simple. I really think some of the four things to consider are if you're gonna move into it as your primary residence and the things you should think about before doing that. Two, if it's gonna be a rental property, what you need to think about. 
three, if you're going to keep it as a rental property, then it makes sense to do a refinance and take some of the equity out so you can go buy another property. Great option. And four, it just makes sense to sell. So I really have a ton of resources to help you. I know sometimes it's so overwhelming. You don't know what to do. Don't do it alone. I'm here to help. I promise you. I'm not encouraging you just to sell if that doesn't make sense for you. And I always encourage people to talk to a CPA, to look at the tax ramifications if you sell, if you keep it as a rental, all those things. I have a great CPA. Love my guy if you want that referral too. Give me a thumbs up if you liked anything I had to say. Subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. And until next time, have a great one.